All right, so last night, wrapped up the work on the top beam for the Maslow. XY motors are working perfectly. So we are now going to turn our attention to the next and hopefully final phase to getting the Maslow back up and running. And that's this beauty here. So I've got to get my linkages set up. I've got to throw the motor on it. And then I've got to start doing some basic tests and um, get the uh, calibration all squared away for the lead screw. Alright, so let's get working on my Z-axis. First off, there's shit everywhere. It's kind of my own fault. That's the problem with having this right next to the radio arm saw. Alright, so this is my linkage system that I use. These are my four mounting holes. Those are the only ones I put in the, the sled because I'm more or less happy with how this is working. Um, these are my risers. However, so I went four inches off the face of my spoil board. I have to factor in that I have one inch thick of the sled. That's because there's a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and a quarter inch piece of HDP. Yeah, you can actually see it down in here. So, subtract an inch from that, we get three inches. Current standoffs are an inch and five eighths. So we're looking at three minus the inch and five eighths. So we need one and three eighths more riser. What the hammer are these? Inch and five eighths. Weird. That's an interesting um, coincidence. Okay, let's see here. Crap. I don't think I have my large hole saw anymore. Uh, other easy ways to do this. I mean, I could cut squares, it's not pretty, but it may be just what I have to do. But they're inch and five eighths, and I have a hole drilled through the center. Okay. So if I put the three of these together. Maybe, maybe, oh shoot, I still got to do that too.
Yeah, no. <sighs> Needs to be like a half inch longer. Probably more. I don't even know where the nylocks are for these. size I may have to get them on McMaster we'll see all right so we can't do that <clears throat> thanks to lack of planning hmm. oh and I wanted to use threaded inserts for this god damn it um all right well I might be on a wall already Looks like I'm going to need to order some stuff from McMaster and get back to you guys. Alright. McMaster car. About time. Nah, I guess they're super fast. Those are crazy long bolts. Hopefully that's enough. And 50 threaded inserts for 1024. So I can mount the stepper motor, or the stepper, the servo motor back here. Also, off camera, I did take care of this. There's still some shavings everywhere, but still the evidence. Oh dear. Nothing like dropping bolts everywhere, huh? That's got some length to it. That's what she said. amount of hands. And that might also be another interesting that's where she said. Yeah, I got thread. I got way more thread than I need, but I got thread. That gives me options. That's the real reason I want a longer one. So just in case we need to go even higher. Just in case we need to get higher, bro. Sorry, I've got a lot of these right now. be a problem. What do we think? Or is it a hard stop? <laughs> I think I have to trim that one. Oy vey. There's always something, right? shop is far too cluttered right now to actually be doing this kind of shit. I really need to spend time cleaning up. But, here goes nothing.
Another good trick is to spin them in a the drill, but it, I'm just getting them done. So a critical part to getting the meticulous z-axis to run is to get the z-axis pitch calibrated correctly. So if we go into ground control, I have ground control open here. Um, this will be very similar for web control. Um, you'll go through the same settings menus and everything, just the interface will be a little different. Uh, so if we go to settings here, we get all of our Maslow settings. So if we look at the top here, we have Maslow, Advanced, Ground Control, and Kivi. We want Maslow. And then the setting we're looking for here is this Z-axis pitch, which by default is at 3.17. So that is the, uh, the effective z-axis pitch of that rigid router base. So I've set up in Excel here a quick little spreadsheet to kind of go over what this pitch really means. Because uh, in the case of the meticulous z-axis, we're using a, a lead screw with a pitch of 8 millimeters. So this means that the lead screw moves 8 millimeters with every rotation. And the critical part about the meticulous z-axis is that we have options to change our gearing from the motor to the lead screw. So in this case, we would be looking at the teeth count on our timing gear pulley on the input shaft, which would be the motor shaft. So at bare minimum, we can do a 30 tooth to 30 tooth ratio, which gives us a ratio of one. So in that pitch, we would put 8, because we would be multiplying the lead screw pitch times that gear ratio. If we move up in our gearing, we can achieve higher ratios. Um, and actually, I am currently running a 60 to 20 ratio on my machine, which is uh, a ratio of 3 to 1. And so this gives me a final pitch of 24. So, depending on what your setup is, um, it's possible to change what this pitch will be. So make sure that you uh, take your t the different pulleys that you have and get them set up um, so that you can grab your pitch here. Um, I'm recommending right now this 3 to 1 ratio works really well for me. Um, it moves super fast, it's super fluid, uh, and it... I'm not having any trouble with it getting bogged down by the weight. And I think that compared to the XY axis, this pitch works really well. So back in ground control, we have our Z axis pitch here. So if we click, we get this interface that asks us what we want this to be. Now, it's important to remember that on the meticulous Z axis, we need our pitch to be a negative number. This is because the motor is oriented opposite of the direction that it's mounted on the stock base, so the rotation is reversed from what the machine expects. Then we can enter the pitch that we calculated in Excel, so in this case it would be 24, and we hit OK. Now if we close this, any z-axis movements that we make will be set with that new pitch. So now would be the time to start to test this. So z-axis motor is hooked up. I've got my tensioner plate, which is putting a good amount of tension here. And I have a dial indicator set on a very rigid part of the machine, although admittedly the magnetic base is sitting on wood. So in the z-axis commands, I have it set to one millimeter. Raise lower. We're gonna put my cursor over raise. We're going to look over here, and we're going to go up. And if I go down, we're moving by a full millimeter. Pretty much on the dot. I don't think the Maslow needs to be any more accurate than that. I mean, we're talking about 0.01 millimeter. Thanks for watching everyone. It's been so great to see that I've been getting a whole bunch of new subscribers lately. In our next video we're going to start to look more at the mechanics of how we're going to run the new chain system. I'll catch you guys all next time.